Friend, have you been taught that you can pray for salvation? Have you been taught that one coming to Jesus, seeking salvation, can just say a prayer and get salvation? Good morning, church. Good to be here. I had a good trip in. My wife and kids are with me, so that's always good. I'm glad to be here. Grateful for you. I'm grateful for our our brother's prayer, Brother Brooks, this morning. That prayer was good, and I appreciate it. I appreciate everyone here, and I hope y'all appreciate your elders. I said it last week, but y'all really need to appreciate them. Uh, They love you. That is such a hard job. You need to make sure that you love them by telling them that you appreciate them and love them by offering to work. What can I do for you? What needs to be done around here? What can I do? Y'all need to love them by uh, expressing gratitude and willingness to work for them. So have you ever heard that? Now, I I say that, it's kind of a rhetorical question when I say, have you been taught that you can pray for salvation? Well, not here you haven't. This is the Lord's church. We abide in the doctrine of Christ. So you haven't heard that here, but maybe you have heard that before. Maybe you have heard someone teach that before. And so what we're going to do is we're going to look at that in light of the Scripture. I actually made a post this week, and and we're just straight going to go to my post. I've got my notes from the post. It's thorough, and I made this image uh, to uh, grab attention. We're going to look at some of these points here and compare them to each other, to the authority of the Word. And, And the purpose of this i got to thank Rex. He gave me the nicest... He, he was so kind to me last week. I, I was quite moved by his comments, and I've uh, carried them with me this week. It, it's servant fuel. But he pointed out, and I don't think this way, but he pointed out that I, I'm giving y'all real-world tools that you can use. God expects us to work for him, doesn't he? He expects us to labor John 6, 27, for the food that does not perish. We're trying to work. We're trying to work for Jesus. We're trying to save the souls of the lost by teaching them the one gospel of Jesus Christ, the one way of salvation, the one church of the Bible. Rex pointed out that I'm actually giving you all some real world, real world tools, and I do it every time. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, well, thanks for saying that. It was super encouraging to hear that. Uh, the reason I do that is about half of my work, you know, half of it's trying to get the lost into the church. The other half is trying to get y'all to get the lost into the church. We all need to be working all the time. So I've made this tool this week, and uh, I put it out there. It's got a lot of traction, lots of of Bible studies. I'll go ahead and interject this here. Uh, Sometimes I make posts like this. I have this image, and then I have a, a text post that goes with it. And what I do is I put it out there. A lot of times, Christians will just be grateful for this truth, and they'll just like it or love it or something. And uh, some of them will share it because they want other people to know what the Bible actually says about the sinner's prayer versus what the Bible says about baptism for salvation. And so I'll put it out there, and folks will share it, and I actually go fishing after the fact. I'll deal with the folks that, I, that are immediate there, that make comments on it. Sometimes I get... Um, Uh, honest questions there from folks who didn't know the truth that I'm I'm sharing with them. And I'll I'll be busy for a day or two or three with one of these, but after a while, I'll go back after there's no action on it, and I click shares. I click where it's been shared, and I'll go follow up, go fishing. Who am I looking for? Well, I'm looking for somebody who pushes against, And maybe they have some legitimate concerns and they have some scriptures that they think might correct that. So we're going to look at that. If we have time after I get through the end of this, we're actually going to look at some, a comment that I, um, with scriptures that I gave in response to one such individual who actually pushed back against this biblical truth. So we're going to look at just, I'm just going to read some of the, the comments that I've made here. We're going to look at the scriptures and I invite you, encourage you to turn to the scriptures as we Uh, get to each scripture. So, friend, have you been taught that one can pray for salvation? Have you been taught that that one coming to Jesus Christ for salvation can just say a prayer for salvation? So that, you know, gets folks' attention. I hope that you could possibly ask people in your life, hey, do they teach you over there where you worship that you can pray for salvation? You can actually ask people this. And if you do this, if they're willing to study with you, this is, 
I mean, it's an attention getter. It can pique their curiosity. Well, well, of course, that's, that's, you know, you invite Jesus into your heart, don't you? And if you can get them curious... And if they're honest, and if they're willing to actually seek Jesus, you can generate some good, honest, fruitful Bible study. What's the goal? Well, getting those folks into the one church of the Bible through obedience to the one gospel of Jesus Christ. That's always the goal. So would you be surprised to find out that Jesus never offered salvation that way? Would would that surprise you? Well, if they're honest, they might be like, well, that's what my preacher told me. Well, let's look at that. Let's look at the Bible as it pertains to this and see what it actually says. Would you be surprised that man made that up just last century? Now that right there, if anybody is genuinely interested in salvation and the authority of Jesus Christ, if they hear that and it doesn't get their attention, I mean, something's going on, they're not interested in salvation. Uh, We would like to think that if you say... Did you know that man made up what you believe last century, that people would at least be concerned and they would look at this evidence? You can use these phrases with people, and I hope that you will. Would you be surprised that the Bible describes such teachings, salvation by a prayer? The Bible describes that as a fable. It actually describes that as a fable. Please turn to 2 Timothy 4, 3 through 4. I have referenced that probably at least half the times that I've spoken here. I've referenced fables from 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 3 and 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 3 and 4. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine but will, according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers. And they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. You got the truth, you got the fables. That itching ears, we we might call that an ear tickler. That's somebody who's telling you what you want to hear. That's somebody who will tell you, "Ah, you don't don't have to do anything. You just have to say a sinner's prayer. Wait a minute, isn't that doing something? It is. We're going to cover that. Heaping up to themselves. Hey, let's get that guy to come in. He teaches that same faith alone stuff. He teaches that same sinner's prayer that this other guy, that's heaping themselves to themselves, teachers having itching ears. Bring in the ear ticklers. I want to be told what I want to hear. It makes me feel good. That's what this is talking about here in 2 Timothy. So it's curious... That those who reject immersion in water by the authority of Jesus Christ for the purpose of having the sins forgiven by the blood of Christ. It's curious. Well, what's curious is they reject it as a work. But they're teaching the work of a sinner's prayer. So the, the irony in this is threefold. Please consider this. So, first of all, let's let's qualify that. They reject immersion in water by the authority of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. So why do I say that? Well, that would be Acts 2.38. I would hope that's hidden in your heart. But Acts chapter 2, verse 38 is what we're going to read now. Acts chapter 2, verse 38. If you don't have this one hidden in your heart, go ahead and do that now. Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Then Peter said to them, Repent. And be baptized, every one of you, in the name of, that is, by the authority of, Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Baptism is for the remission of sins. I was actually in a Bible study late last night with an individual, and he said there is no baptism for the remission of sins. And this is a guy who had been to seminary. And I was just dumbfounded by that statement. So I shared with him Acts 2.38. So they reject it. They reject baptism for the remission of sins. As a work. Oh, we're not saved by works. Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. So we're going to cover that too. Ephesians 2, 8, and 9, we're going to cover that too. The irony here is threefold because, number one, baptism is not a work of man. Baptism is not a work of man. It is not. Now, why would I say that? By the authority of Scripture, by the authority of Jesus. That's the only way I'm ever going to tell you anything. It's by the authority of Jesus I say this. I want you to turn to Colossians 2, chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2, verses 10 through 12 is what we're going to read. Colossians chapter 2. 
Baptism is not a work of man. Baptism is indeed the work of God himself. In fact, submission to it is the evidence that one has faith in God. Let's read Colossians 2, verses 10 through 12. And you are complete in him who is the head of all principality and power. In him you were also circumcised with the circumcision made without hands by putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision in Christ of Christ, buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through faith. Here it is, faith in the working of God. Baptism is faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead. Is that an opinion? Is that an interpretation? Or is that God breathed? Colossians 2, 10 through 12. You need this. Christian, you need this. Oh, but but baptism is a work. We're not saved by works. Baptism is a work. Friend, it's the work of God himself. Colossians 2, 10 through 12 is your first piece of evidence that you need. Number two, the second reason why this is totally, sadly ironic, the sinner's prayer is a work of man. It is something we do. Not only is it an ineffective fable made up by man, it's something the individual does himself. So the irony is, oh, we're not saved. You can't be saved by baptism. That's a work. It is not a work that the believer does. It is a work done by God himself. Oh, but you're saved by the sinner's prayer. But that's a work. That's a work that man made up that you got to do. But you just said we weren't saved by works. Sad irony number two. Sad irony number three. Proponents of the work of the sinner's prayer reject that works are essential to salvation while teaching a work for salvation. Is this not just painfully ironic? Sadly ironic? It is. That's three reasons why it's sadly ironic. Dear friend, this is how I address them. Dear friend, you got to be careful with these folks. You, you are telling them a, an, a life-altering truth from the Word that should cut them to the heart. You've got to be delicate with them. What you're telling them is hard to digest. It is not hard to understand. It is hard to digest, and we've got to be careful with them. Dear friend, that's how I tell them. Dear friend, immersion in water by the authority of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins is not from the minds of men. We did not make this up. We don't have any authority to make any of this up. It's God-breathed. It comes straight from the Word, the authoritative words of Jesus Christ. Mark 16, 15 and 16. Please turn there. Mark 16. You need this in your arsenal. This is another one you need to have hidden in your heart. And by that, I mean memorized. You need to have this. Mark 16, 15 and 16. When somebody says, oh, but Jesus never said you have to be baptized. You need Mark 16, 15, and 16. And he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who has believed and has been baptized shall be saved, but he who has been disbelieved shall be condemned. I actually like the New American Standard version on that best. That's my favorite. He who has believed and has been baptized will be saved. Who's, who's going to be saved, Jesus? He who has been baptized. He who has believed. He who has been baptized. He who has believed and who has been baptized will be saved. Jesus. That's Jesus talking there. So baptism's not a work that man does whereby they can earn salvation. So many times when we teach God's terms for salvation, Jesus' terms for salvation, Jesus' merciful offer for salvation for those who believe and are baptized. Oh, but you're teaching man earns salvation. Why aren't you teaching? Why are you not teaching that man earns salvation by saying that prayer that somebody made up last century? Man does not earn salvation when we meet God's terms for salvation. The reason... The sinner's prayer does not work. The reason the sinner's prayer does not work is because man made it up. You need to drive that one home for them. You need to stand on it, repeat it, 
Man made it up. Man made it up last century. It's not from God. Jesus did not offer this. It's a fable. Man made this up last century. If they don't wrap their mind around that concept, man made it up last century. Just say it again until that actually gets their attention. Man made up the sinner's prayer last century. You got to repeat it sometimes. He did, Jesus never offered salvation that way. He did, however, command us to go preach the gospel and offer salvation to those who believe and are baptized. Mark 16, 15, and 16. Uh, further, we are warned what's going to happen to anyone not obeying the gospel. Please, please put this in your, in your banks right here, in your memories. Go preach the gospel. He that believes and is baptized will be saved. Now I want you to pair this with 2 Thessalonians 1.8. Please turn to 2 Thessalonians 1.8. Keeping in mind that Jesus said, go preach the gospel. He that believes and is baptized will be saved. 2 Thessalonians verses one, chapter 1, verses 8 and 9. 2 Thessalonians 1, 8 and 9. One more time. Go preach the gospel. He that believes and is baptized will be saved. You need to remember that when presenting 2 Thessalonians 1, 8, 9. In flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, these shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of His power. You think those two things are connected? Go preach the gospel. The gospel? He that believes and is baptized will be saved. In flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and obey not the gospel. Go preach the gospel. If you don't obey the gospel, it's flaming fire and the vengeance of God. Go preach the gospel. He that believes and has been baptized will be saved. In flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. 2 Thessalonians 1.8. You need it in your arsenal. So you can fight against the lies. So you can fight against Satan. So you can fight against these people. No. We are not fighting against these people who you love. We're not fighting against them. We're fighting for them on their behalf against Satan, against his faith-only false teachers, against the people that he has got bamboozled. And those people who are deceived and repeating that deception. We're not fighting against those people. We're not fighting against people. We're fighting against Satan and false doctrine. You need Mark 16, 15 and 16 and 2 Thessalonians 1, 8 and 9 together. So at this point, I ask them, dear friend, after showing them this evidence, you can do this too. Dear friend, won't you take him up on his most merciful and entirely understandable offer for salvation for those who believe and have been baptized? I know you understand it now. It's time to present that offer at that point. Once you've taught them, the sinner's prayer is a fable. It's sad irony for these three reasons. And Jesus offered salvation for those who believe and are baptized. it's, It's time. It's time. You can offer them salvation at that point by the authority of Jesus Christ. Make sure you point out that we're not teaching that you earn it. We didn't make it up. This is Jesus talking here. If you have been taught that salvation is by prayer, you don't have to keep believing it. You don't. You can start believing Jesus instead. Believe instead that it doesn't work, that sinner's prayer, because man literally made it up last century. Believe instead Jesus when he said, He that believes and has been baptized will be saved. So Jesus has all authority. I need you to turn to Matthew 26, Matthew 28, 18 through 20. Matthew 28. Matthew chapter 28, 18 through 20. Hide this one in your heart. Put it in your tool bag, servants. Are you a servant? Well, you need this tool in your tool bag. Jesus came and spoke to them saying, All authority has been given unto me in heaven and on the earth. Go therefore, talking to you, Christian, go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them. By what authority? In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all the things that I've commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. That's Jesus talking there. Share this evidence with them. Make sure they know it is in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. By the authority of Jesus having all authority. Not an opinion. So at this point, just straight up, tell them you love them. Is it weird and awkward? Sometimes it is. Is it weird and awkward when I tell strangers that I love them? Yes, it is. I don't care. I love you. 
Not in a let's go eat cheeseburgers and go bass fishing way. I love you in a let's go to heaven kind of way. I love you in a I want you to have the blood of Christ kind of way. I need to love these folks in a I want you to go to heaven kind of way. I want you to benefit from all spiritual blessings that are only found in Christ Jesus, Ephesians 1, 3 kind of way. So at this point, it, it, it's a work done by the individual himself, the sinner's prayer it is. But baptism is a work done by God himself. Made up last century, it's by the authority of Jesus Christ. Does not result in salvation, results in salvation. 1 Peter 3, 20 and 21. Here's my uh, commentary on 1 Peter 3, 20 and 21. I love this. It is potent. Eight souls were saved by water. Just like that, baptism now saves you. It doesn't wash the dirt from the flesh. Instead, you get a clear conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Who has gone through the resurrection of Jesus Christ? Paul asks in Romans 6, don't you know this? He actually starts by saying, know ye not? Only as many as were baptized are united in death with Christ and raised to walk in newness of life. That is how baptism now saves you. Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, only those baptized have gone through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. At this point, we've gotten some pushback. So I have it right here. The pushback came, and we're going to consider what you say to this. Do you, church, do you know what to say? Oh, but, but Romans 10, 9 and 10. Oh, but you need to be baptized to be saved. Oh, but Romans 10, 9 and 10. You know what Romans 10, 9 and 10 says? Let's read it. Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. You need this evidence. Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation do you know how to handle that oh, oh but he that believes and is baptized will be saved friend oh but it, romans 10 9 and 10 you just got to believe and confess do you know how to handle that i got some evidence for you you need this all right so the first thing i've got a bunch of facts about this passage number one it contains just some of what God has required of us before he will save us by grace through faith. Anyone being saved is going to be saved by grace through faith, okay? Romans 10, 9 and 10 contains just some of what is required of us. If we read in a certain passage that this is required of us, it's always going to be required of us. If we go somewhere else and read something else, that doesn't negate this part. There may be more, but there can never be less. Learn that one from Eddie Gilpin. There may be more, but there could never be less. All right, so the first thing is it just contains some of what is required of us. Number two, it can't contradict any of the other scriptures that reveal other of God's requirements of us. It can't contradict. Number three, it was written to the saved. It was written to the church, the church at Rome. How can we know this? Well, Romans 10... One starts with brethren. It starts by addressing brethren. It addresses the church. Those folks that are using Romans 10, 9 to say, oh, you don't have to be baptized for salvation are trying to use baptized believers as a reason why they think they don't have to be baptized. How is that logical? It's not. How is that logical? It's not. You cannot use baptized believers as a reason why you don't have to be baptized. It's not logical. And once you've learned it, it becomes dishonest if you repeat it. I'm going to throw that one out there. Let's look four chapters previous. Let's go back to Romans 6. We're going to have to have the context of Romans 10 by going four chapters previous. Let's go to Romans 6. We just covered this. Just my, uh, my um, commentary on it, that is, after coming out of 1 Peter 3 and 20, 20 and 21. So, the first, the third and fourth verses... Romans 6, verses 3 and 4. We're going to read them together. Or, do you not know 
That's the know ye not from the KJV. Do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in newness of life. Don't you know this, Paul asks. The Apostle Paul, know ye not? Don't you know this only as many as were baptized? So those people in Romans 10, 9 and 10, they're called brethren. And then four chapters previous, it says that they only as many as were united in death with Christ are raised to walk in newness of life. But verse 17 is really helpful here. Romans 6, verse 17, as it pertains to both Romans 10 and Romans 6, 3 and 4. So we're going to drop down to verse 17 here. Romans 6, verse 17. Now keep in mind, only as many as were baptized are united in death with Christ. Now let's see what 17 has to say about this. God be thanked that you were the servants of sin, but here's the smoking gun. You have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine what was delivered you. Those people, those believers, they were baptized to obey the form of doctrine that had been delivered to them. And then four chapters later, they're told, hey, you need to keep believing and keep confessing Christ's deity. That follows with Jesus' great commission. Keep telling people. Keep believing that Jesus is the Son of God. Keep telling people about it. Keep confessing Christ's deity so other people will obey from the heart that form of doctrine that you now are delivering to them. Are you Christian? Are you delivering this form of doctrine that we just read about? Are you delivering it to folks? It is your job, Christian. You need to work hard for Jesus. He expects us to labor for the food that does not perish. John 6, 27. More. It was not written to people to tell them how to be saved. Romans 10, 9, and 10 does not tell people how to be saved. It's written to the saved. It's written to the saved. Let's look at, let's look at Romans 10, 9, and 10 again. Oh, important word in there. Romans 10, 9, and 10. Let's go back to it again. Stick in Romans for a minute. Romans 10, 9, and 10. We're going to read it one more time and notice a very important word. Romans 10, 9, and 10. That if shalt, thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto. That is a huge four-letter word right there. That's a big, potent word right there. The heart man believed unto righteousness. With the mouth confession is made unto salvation. You know what another word that's real important, it's real close to that word is? You've got to change one letter and it's called into. I-N-T-O. Into. You've got to get into Christ. You're unto righteousness. You're unto salvation with belief and confession. But you've got to get into Christ. Boy, I have given you an arsenal right here. I hope that you'll use it. How are we going to get into Christ? Two passages. One way. How are you going to get into Christ? Two passages. One way. The Bible reveals exactly one way that you can get into Christ. Before we quote these, and we've already quoted one of them, before we quote these, I want you to consider that all spiritual blessings, Ephesians 1.3, are found in Christ. Ah, let's go there. Ephesians 1 3. Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians. Written to the church at Ephesus, who was baptized. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual ple- blessings in heavenly places. And where are they? In Christ. All of them are in Christ. You think salvation is a spiritual blessing? I guarantee it. Where is it? It's in Christ, along with all the rest of the spiritual blessings. How do we get there? Now, Romans 6, 3 and 4 that we've covered several times now tells us, only as many, don't you know this? No, you not. Only as many as were baptized are in Christ. That's one of the two verses, passages, that tells us how to get into Christ. The other one tells you the same thing. It's Galatians 3, 27. For as many of you 
as we're baptized into Christ and put on Christ. We haven't even scratched the surface on the evidence regarding baptism for salvation, for the remission of sins, which is by the authority of Jesus Christ. We haven't even scratched the surface. I've given you one example, just hitting hard on Romans 10, 9, and 10. We've pointed out that the sinner's prayer is a fable made up by man last century, and it doesn't work because of that. We've pointed out that baptism for salvation is by the authority of Jesus Christ. It's the only way to get into Christ. It's the only way to get the spiritual blessing of Christ. When people say, oh, but Romans 10, 9, and 10, now, Christian, you're armed. you got no excuse. I want you to use all this information. And if you did not get good notes on it, you know what you can do? Do what one, other, one of our sisters here did. Can you give me those notes about the rapture? You delivered that message last week? You better believe it. Click bang. You got it. I got this right here. And actually, this is one of my more organized notes because I, I made it as a text post for Facebook. So it's actually better organized than most of my notes. Most of my notes are pretty uh, sparse, to say the least. If you want this evidence, I want you to want this evidence. It's organized. It's neat. You can use it. You might just send it along. Or you might just send this message along because you know what? I got it recorded. Yep, and when I post it, it will have all the supporting scriptures. If you don't like Facebook, I put it on YouTube too. You can share this message and get those folks out of those spiritual dead-end denominations that deny Christ by denying His words. Oh, they can say, oh, we believe in Jesus. But when they deny His words, that he that believes and that has been baptized will be saved. When they say, no, 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 you don't have to be baptized to be saved. That's denying Christ, and that's not believing in Christ. When they say, he that believes will be saved and then baptized. You know what that is? Resting. W-R-E-S-T. Rest. Resting the scriptures to their own destruction. They have reversed the words of Jesus, and that is not believing in Jesus. You know you have friends... I know you have friends. I know you have relatives that believe against the authority of Jesus Christ and thus do not believe in Jesus Christ. We need to love these folks. It is hard. It is uncomfortable. But you can do this, Philippians 4.13, through Christ who strengthens you. I hope this has been beneficial to you. I go hard every time, don't I? I love that truth. Oh, I love biblical truth. Oh, I love you. I want you to be ready. I want when Jesus comes in the clouds, I want him to be able to look at you and say, wow, that sister worked hard teaching her neighbor. That neighbor just said, no, Romans 10, 9, and 10. And and she tried again, and she gave her the evidence that those were baptized believers. Oh, but, but no, Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. Oh, but they were baptized in Acts 19, verses 1 through 5. That sister, oh, my child, God will say, You worked hard for me, for that food that does not perish, John 6, 27. I want you to be ready. Christian, you're going to have to work hard for Jesus to be ready. He expects us all to be hardworking servants. If I stepped on your toes, you know how how you move them? You know how you fix me stepping on your toes? Go teach your neighbor. That's it. Go teach your brother-in-law. Go teach your mother. Whoever it is that you know, that co-worker... Go teach them. That's how you move, move your toes out from me stepping on them. Just work for Jesus. Teach those people about the one way of salvation. If you haven't obeyed that one way of salvation, now's the time. Maybe you did something different. Maybe you accepted Jesus into your heart. Fable. Maybe you invited Jesus to be your personal Savior. Fable. Last century. Maybe you said that sinner's prayer. Last century. Fable. Maybe you've been sitting on that pew for five years or 35 years. And you never did it right. Maybe you were baptized thinking you were already saved. Well, friend, that is not baptism. That's just not baptism. Just like sprinkling a baby isn't baptism. Just like uh, pouring water over somebody so they can be voted into a denomination is not baptism. If you went down to the water thinking you were already saved, you were neither saved nor baptized. I love you. If you need to repent of anything... Or as I always say, if you just need prayers for anything, we are family, spiritual, eternal family, and that's what we do for each other. Any kind of need, any kind of spiritual need, 
Make it known now if you need to repent of anything or if you need to go down to the water so the blood of Jesus Christ will forgive you of your sins. Now's the time. Any need, come on now while we stand and sing. I love you.